My name is Neil Malik. I'm from Mac Training, and today's video for Everyday Office is being able to create custom navigation in a SharePoint site. This is going to be kind of a, a long process because it involves multiple steps. First, I'm going to be creating a set of things that I want to add to the navigation system that's on the left hand side. And in doing this, what I'm going to be doing is adding a new custom column and then using that custom column and creating a new view. So let's go ahead and get started with this. Item number one is here is a vendor list within SharePoint. And you can see that there are different companies in here. I have everybody's phone numbers and that I will probably want to be able to differentiate between the vendors who supply us with food and the vendors who supply us with different types of services. And so it would be nice to have an additional column on this list where I could differentiate between, you know, uh, between caterers and technical support and whatever other types of vendors we use. To do this, I'm going to go in and add a new custom column. You create a new custom column by going to the list tab at the top of the screen and using the create column button up here in the top left. The column I want to make is, well, let's call this one vendor type. Now I could leave this as a line of text for people to type in, but I'd like to very cleanly differentiate between the different types of vendors. So instead, I'm going to give them a multiple choice menu, this third option down, and I'm going to specifically lay out the types of vendors that we have. Right down here, I'm going to enter in our choices. So maybe, maybe it'll be catering, logistics, and uh, information technology. Those are the three types of vendors that we employ. It'll be supplied to us as a drop down menu. And I'll go ahead and click OK. Now you'll notice that Microsoft goes ahead and drops that column right here onto the page for me. And to do this quickly, I'm now going to the quick edit mode on the list tab or to the edit button right here at the top of the screen. Either one of these will give me the editing mode of this and allow me to choose the type of vendors that each of these people are. So some of these people might not even have labels, and that's fine. At this point, I'm going to click on Stop Editing the List, and that will lock in all of these different entries. So it should be relatively self-explanatory that I would like people to be able to get to this list quickly and easily, which means I would like to add the Vendors List to Navigation System on the left-hand side. But here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that I would love to be able to give my uh, coworkers the ability to go jump straight to just the caterers or jump straight to just the logistics people or jump straight to just the information technology folks. And I can make that happen by creating new views of this data that filter out all the other records. Now, before we go there, just note that when I create this filter, I'm going to have to know exactly what I typed here. It's not going to give me an option to choose it. So I'm going to take a moment and memorize that I made catering, logistics, and information technology. Now I go to my list tab up at the top of the screen, and the next part of this exercise is to create a new view. So I click on create view up in the top left hand corner. And I'm going to go ahead and start from the all contacts view that we already have. So the all contacts view is the one that you were just looking at. I love it in every way except for the fact that I'm seeing all the different types of vendors. So I'm going to start from the all contacts view, create a copy of it, and do something new. So I click on all contacts here, and this first one will be called caterers. Now I'm not going to make this default view because then people might assume that those are the only types of vendors we had. I'm instead going to make it something we can choose. 
So I'll scroll down here. Everything is fine about this view, except right here at the end, we have the ability to filter the data. So I click on show items only when the following is true. Show items when the column for vendor type that I created right down here is equal to, and this is where I said you just have to memorize it, right? So it was catering. Scroll down and click OK. And now I have a view that shows me only those vendors who are in catering. Life is good. Now I'm going to go another step to it. Go back to list at the top of the screen, create a view again, and again I'm going to duplicate an existing view I might as well just go ahead and duplicate caterers, that's fine. I will create a view called logistics. And the filter for this view is that the vendor type needs to be equal to logistics. Scroll down and hit OK. And you know exactly where I'm going with this next step. Go back to list, create a new view copy one of the existing views, call this one information technology. Scroll down, make sure that the vendor type is set to information technology. Scroll down and hit OK. OK, so now anybody who wants to can come to this list and click between all contacts caterers, information technology, and on the little ellipsis button here, also logistics. And they'll be able to see the subsets of contacts within the all contacts view. So those were two steps so far. I added a new custom column that allowed me to differentiate between the different items. Then I created new views that filtered on that column. And all of that was to set up the ability for me to customize the navigation system. So here's the idea. If I go to the caterers view, you'll notice that not only does the page refresh, but up here at the top of the screen, the address says knack.sharepoint.com slash yada 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 slash caterers. And so there is a page just for the caterers view. If I copy this, I should be able to make a new hyperlink over here on the navigation system with that hyperlink. So I'll click on to edit links over here on the left. Click on plus link. Type in caterers. And then paste the address that I just copied. And click OK. Then I click Save and I've got caterers. We're doing OK here. Now let's go another level. Information technology. I look at that view. I go to the address bar and copy the address for that view. I click on Edit Links. I click on the plus sign with the word link. I put in information technology or IT or whatever you want to put in there and then paste the address and click OK and save it and one more time I go over here to logistics with logistics I copy the address I click on edit links click on the plus sign with the word link logistics paste that address in and hit OK. So now when I hit save, I have those three entries on my navigation system. So that's my third step is to take each one of those particular views and be able to get to it by just simply clicking on that entry on the navigation bar on the left hand side. But I'm going to finish this off with one more level. So when I click on edit links over here on the left, you'll see that I can actually just click and drag these things around, including the fact that Microsoft gave me my vendors link here already. So I'm going to take the vendors link out from within recent and just put it right here underneath documents. So this is a link that takes me to all my vendors. It would be kind of nice to be able to have caterers, information technology, and logistics 
nestled underneath vendors and you can do exactly that you just click on caterers drag it up and when it's indented underneath vendors i let go grab information technology drag it up when it's indented i let go logistics click and drag when it's indented under vendors i let it go and now when i hit save you can see that i can click on the link for vendors or i can click on the link for each of the individual entries underneath vendors and so those are the four steps to creating a truly customized navigation experience for your coworkers. Step one was to customize the list so that you could differentiate between different types of things. Step two was to create views that filtered for those. Step three was to create new entries for each one of those views in the navigation system. And step four was that you could create subordinate links underneath a heading link in your navigation system as well.